Welcome to KISS, keeping it simple with Single Path. I'm Bill Borbis, and today my guest is Bryce Austin. Bryce is the owner of TCE Strategy. He's a CIO, CISO, keynote speaker, friend, and best-selling author of Secure Enough. Bryce, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Bill. So Bryce, tell me about your book, Secure Enough, and what does it mean to be secure enough? Well, in a shameless plug, I found a need in the cybersecurity market space to help train people on what it meant to be secure enough for their own companies. The problem was there are lots of products available that are supposed to help you be secure. And some of them have a lot of utility, some of them don't, but they tend to be point solutions. And being in a cyber secure posture for you and your company isn't about one solution, one change. It's a holistic set of products and behaviors and best practices that go together to make your risk tolerance at a level where you can sleep at night. So I tried to write a book that was a reasonably easy read that wasn't going to take you weeks and weeks to get through. See, it isn't all that long. And I tried to have people understand by the time they finish the book, the right questions to be asking about their company, about them personally, about their industry as it relates to cybersecurity. And it's written to folks that are not technology experts. It's written for the head of finance, for the CEO, for the head of operations, so they know what questions to be asking. Either they're outsourced IT service, they're in-house IT people, their company as a whole. And Bryce, I just say it's, it's a fantastic read. You're a terrific storyteller. Thank and, you. and it is one of those where you could, like when, when I first got a copy of it, I, I burned through it in a weekend and I'm a slow reader. So, so I have to say, I, I truly enjoyed reading it. So, so for our listeners who, who uh, want to pick up a copy of your book, where would they find it? That's easy to do. If you are looking for one or two copies, Amazon works great. Barnes and Noble has them as well. If you want several, please give me a ring directly because I can sell in bulk. Fantastic. So Bryce, you're a cybersecurity expert. And so maybe could you tell us about some of the current trends in cybersecurity that we should be aware of? Absolutely. So I'm seeing a number of things in 2020 that I'm asking my clients to pay particular attention to. One of them, probably the biggest one for uh, the last several months, has been business email compromise. That is where someone gets a hold of the credentials to get into the CFO's email, the controller's email, the CEO's email. And they use that typically to listen in. They listen in for a few weeks on what's happening in the company. And then they wait for an opportunity to where your company, say, has a big bill that it's going to pay to some vendor. And they insert themselves in the conversation, typically pretending to be the vendor. And then they will ask you to change the bank account information where you're going to send payment, that sort of thing. And I've had customers be taken for over $100,000 using that. Oh my. The way to prevent it, it's very easy. You need to use good, strong passwords on your email accounts, and you need to use multi-factor authentication. What is multi-factor authentication? It essentially uses your phone as a secondary means to make sure that you are really you. As soon as you log in on a computer, if the computer is new, MFA or multi-factor authentication is going to say, I haven't seen you on this computer before. I see your credentials, they look good, but I'm gonna ping your phone either using an app you've installed or sending a text or what have you, just to make sure that you are you. It's a very powerful way to keep cyber criminals out of your email, so it's harder for them to initiate wire fraud transfers. On that note, though, oftentimes your company has nothing to do with the hack. It is your customer or your vendor that gets hacked, and you just may be the unsuspecting victim. If anyone asks you to change the bank account information that you're going to send money to, pick up the phone. Talk to them. Make sure they are who they really claim to be. Now, I've heard of a few instances where people have set up fake email, I'm sorry, uh, fake phone numbers to try to intercept that. That's unusual. So that's an edge case. Typically, one phone call can save you from sending tens of thousands of dollars to the wrong place. So wow. that's one area that I'm seeing a whole bunch of uptick and I'm trying to educate customers as to how to keep themselves safe. The next, the need for patching is increasing. Uh, last Tuesday, Microsoft put out a very serious patch where the encryption engine built into Windows has a fatal flaw. And it can be used to where if you go to 
your banking site, if you go to Amazon, it's possible that's not the real site. The whole thing's a fake. And because of this flaw, you have no indication of it. You still get the pretty little lock on your screen up in the corner, you know, that says everything's fine. So patching windows, patching your phone, patching your applications is as critical now as it ever has been. And it seems to be getting more so. The fix is simple. Just set everything to auto patch. Go ahead and let systems automatically install the updates, let them reboot themselves in the middle of the night, put it on your cell phone, put it on your computer, and then forget about it. Yes, there are rare occasions where the update causes a problem, but the number of problems you're solving by letting it update is huge. So that's a big one. I'd recommend customers set everything to auto update themselves, and then every so often check to make sure it's working properly. Next, uh, using the same password, for different areas is a real problem. There's an attack called credential stuffing. And how credential stuffing works is this. You were using a password back in 2013 and those systems were hacked and bad guys have a copy of the dump of all of those usernames and passwords. Well, they are using them by trying to use your email address and that password at new systems, at your bank account, at your retirement account, at Amazon, Etsy, eBay, all the retailers, and on occasion, they're getting right because you're using the same password in multiple places. Well, that's a problem. It's called a credential stuffing attack. And I have both uh, individual clients that have dealt with this. And I've had companies fall victim to it where they're an online retailer. And they find that bad guys are using these stolen credentials. And one time in 150, it's correct. And if you have millions of accounts, you can do the math. That's tens of thousands of compromised accounts. So that's a big one that customers are having to worry about. The last one is ransomware. Ransomware is on the rise. This is where a bad guy somehow gets into your computer or your business and they encrypt all your files. And then they demand money to try to unencrypt the files that you had to begin with. It's just simple extortion. That's all it is. The problem is twofold. One, it costs a lot of money and you may or may not get the key to uh, unencrypt these. But two, and even more importantly, Oftentimes you will spend the money and you will get the key, but the way it was encrypted didn't work as expected. You know, cyber criminals are really not known for their strong error checking of their code to make sure it works right all the time. So I've run into situations to where we've had to pay the ransom and we get the key and not too much is salvageable. So many cybersecurity best practices will keep bad guys out from a ransomware standpoint, but the single biggest thing you can do is to make a backup of your files and keep them offline. If you're an individual or a small business, keep them in a drawer. Just make sure it's a locked and secure drawer. If you're a larger company, you need to use some sort of offline backup solution. It could be up in the cloud, as long as someone can't compromise you on site and then infect your cloud area, which is a concern. I still have some clients using backup tapes or even portable hard drives because they become so inexpensive. It sounds kind of old school, but if a system is disconnected from your network, it's very hard for a bad guy to encrypt it. Those are the biggest things that I'm seeing. And thankfully, they all have very effective and simple mitigations if you do the mitigation before the bad guy comes to get you. Thank you for sharing those risks, Bryce, as well as your recommendations. Single Path, in partnership with Foresight, Ingram Micro, and Mimecast, We'll be hosting a cybersecurity event on Thursday, February 20th, and you're going to be facilitating it. Bryce, tell us a little bit more about the event and what attendees should expect. We're going to have a good time is what we're going to do. Uh, we are going to talk about some of the major breaches that have captured a lot of headlines, things like the Target breach. I was at Target during the breach, and it was a very exciting, challenging time. We're going to talk about Equifax. We're going to talk about ransomware. We're gonna talk about how these things have impacted the companies that were victims to them and what companies can do to keep themselves from being victims themselves. After that, we're gonna have some workshops. We're gonna to try to dive into the specifics of your company or you individually and figure out what sort of incident response plans, what sort of disaster recovery scenarios do you have that are realistic concerns for your company and how prepared are you in the event that these things happen?
And we're going to go through these scenarios in little tables to have people talk amongst themselves and try to share their own best practices. And then we're going to try to get together as a group and to understand what things from a real world standpoint we can apply to try to keep your company one step ahead of these bad guys that are trying to take us down. Bryce, thank you for joining the show. We certainly look forward to seeing you on February 20th at the event. For our listeners and viewers who are interested in attending, please reach out to your single path account manager and we will be happy to get you registered. And thank you for joining KISS, keeping it simple with single path. If you're joining via the podcast and found value in this episode, please subscribe and comment. You can also follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook, and of course, singlepath.com. Thank you.